Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. Looks like a lot of fakes were bought. Fake coins from an Ohio dealer. Very interesting. This comes to us from CoinWorld. Several people had contacted me about this. Thanks, you guys, for sharing this with me. A Western Ohio numismatist recently purchased for educational purposes only, so they say, right? Now, that's probably true in this case. Um, a collection of counterfeit United States coins, most purportedly fabricated more than 60 years ago. So probably more for more than the uh, recent uh, uh, fakes that came in from China. Roy Emery from Old Fort Coins in Fort Recovery, Ohio, said he learned of the assemblage of counterfeits when he met their owner recently at a coin show in nearby Menden, Ohio. The collector indicated he would stop by Emery's coin shop sometime when his schedule permitted. When the collector finally brought the 73-piece collection in for Emery to evaluate, each piece was mounted individually secured at the rims by miniature nails shaped like railroad spikes in a wooden display case. Emery said that the 73 pieces, only two, were genuine. The bulk of the counterfeits represented roughly 60 U.S. half cents and large cents and a few small cents and a handful of first-year of issue 18th century U.S. coins. Emery said the owner from nearby St. Mary's, Ohio, claimed he had owned the fakes for 13 years and had purchased them from another collector who amassed them over a 53-year period. The collector who also who sold the counterfeits to Emery knew when he bought them from their previous owner that they were fakes. It's not known if the original collector knew they were uh, inauthentic. Other than the word of the collector who sold the pieces to Emery, no evidence was presented to determine when the counterfeits uh, might actually have been made. The fakes include a 1793 flowing hair chain, America scent, uh, an 1856 flying eagle scent, that's a pretty pricey coin, an 1877 Indian head scent, and 1909 S. Lincoln VDB scent, another very pricey coin, 1794 flowing hair dollar, 1796 drape bus dime, 1796 drape bus quarter dollar, very expensive coins if they were genuine. 1796 trade bust half dollar, 1873 trade dollar, and an 1885 CC trade dollar, a year for which there was no production of trade dollars at the Carson City Mint in Nevada. First clue that that was fake. The 1794 dollar is composed of 82.7% silver, 9.7% copper, and 7% zinc. Emory said that the counterfeits if the counterfeits were genuine, their total value would run in the millions of dollars, I believe it. Emery said that he paid the collector $300 plus a regular 2018 proof set in trade. That's a bargain, especially if they're pretty quality fakes. Emery plans to add the fakes to his counter display of counterfeits he has accumulated over the years, which includes bogus silver bars and silver rounds. There's also a magnetic 1873 trade dollars he's had for years that is composed of 81 point. 3% iron, 12.6% nickel, and 0.36% silver. That's pretty amazing that there would be any silver at all in there, much less, you know, uh, below 1%. Another magnetic piece for which he didn't have the composition details is a $1796 that bears the obverse design of the flowing hair dollar, which was produced in 1794 in 1795 before the drape bus design went into production in 1796. So let's take a look at the pictures of some of these coins here from Coin World's website. Here's a fake 1794 flowing hair silver dollars among the more than 30, 73 U.S. coin counterfeits recently acquired by Ohio dealer Roy Emery in a collection he aims to, to use as an educational tool. Very good. Now here is Another image here of the counterfeit 1794 flowing hair dollar top is among the fakes Roy Emery recently acquired for educational purposes. The lower images of, are of the genuine coin. Interesting indeed. And you can see, other than the color, um, you know, it may be tough to really tell the difference unless it's in hand. Obviously, this is 
pristine condition look of the hair pattern on this one here compared to this one there. But should that lower curl there, that one's a slightly tighter curl and a thicker as well. And that's a hint of the difference there between the two. And here's a counterfeit 1793 flowing hair chain set. It's one of 60 large scents in the collection. And here we see the counterfeit with a genuine example below. Interesting. You know, that's the thing. If you see a really rare date coin that you, you see for sale somewhere for uh, expensive but well under probably the market value, it's always good to be uh, leery and uh, question with boldness that which you are viewing as genuine or not. Now, here's another one here. And uh, of one of the contacts that sent me this, um, down in New Mexico, it said that this was a uh, CCT coin slide. It actually is not. It's a it's a cheap imitation thereof. That's not the actual CCT coin slide, but it is of the same technology. But I believe, probably, if I'm not mistaken, CCT was the first to make coin slides. I've not heard of them before him. But there's a fake $17.96 recently acquired. It's not only magnetic, but bears a flowing hair design used on only 1794 and 1795. So you have to really know your coins of what designs were used and what years. That's another clue for sure, but you can see it's sticking there to the um, magnetic surface of the slide there. Counterfeit 1796 Drake Bus Dime top with a genuine issued shown below it there. Look at that. Very interesting indeed. Here's um, another example here of the 1796 Drake Bus Quarter top with genuine issue below it. And you can look at the date there and tell that's cheaply done there with that date. Fascinating. And of course the hair and the ribbon there. The way the stars are more flattened. Definitely a, a difference there if you look closely, if you know what the genuine article looks like. And here is the 17, 1873 trade dollar upper images the Emory has had for a number of years. is magnetic composition of 86.3% iron, 12.6% nickel, and 0.36% silver, which is very odd. And then below is a genuine coin. The trade dollar is one of the most faked um, silver dollars out there. And you can see the images are different in the eagle between the top version and, and bottom version. But there's other examples. Look at how the lip wearing the cap bus is holding closer, whereas the trade dollar is out, extended olive branch rather than a capped bust or a capped uh, a cap on the end of the of the rod there. A big difference between these two. But trade dollars are probably one of the most commonly faked silver dollars out there for sure. Emory's counterfeit collection includes a so-called 1885 CC trade dollar. No trade dollar was struck at the Carson City Mint in Nevada in 1885. So there's that example there. Very interesting indeed. A fake 1909 SVDB scent is illustrated at the top with a genuine example below. And uh, the way you can tell this is fake is actually very easy. Look at the S. And look at the condition of this coin compared to the S. The S would not be that pronounced, which means somebody had sliced an S off and put it on there. They actually can do that, believe it or not. They just glue the S on to the coin. And very interesting. That's the most common way these are faked, indeed. And there's the uh, all but two of the 73 U.S. cents in the scoring display are counterfeit. Uh, very good. So there's the display there with the nails that hold them. An attractive looking display of coins, uh, for sure. Definitely will be a make for a great educational um, series for this. And we'd love to visit that coin shop to see these. And for 300 bucks, it's really not a bad price to pay. And uh, the owner, depending on how much he paid, he may have came out ahead or maybe he lost some if, he's a, if he 
but he claims he knew they were fake when he bought them. That probably is the case. But nonetheless, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.